and welcome to Shop Franklin Supporting Small Business, where we will talk about ways that we can support, raise awareness of, and create community around Franklin's independently owned local businesses. My name is Sarah Mabardi. Today we have with us Jen Garcia of Elizabeth's Bagels. Thanks for having me, Sarah. Thank you for coming. You're like the mayor of Franklin, so it, I know you have true. things to do, babies to kiss, true. peoples to meet, yep, people this to is meet. True. So, thank you. So today we want to learn about you. We know you have great bagels. Thank you. And how? It's a labor of love. And it is a labor, and a lot of labor, which is why I go and buy the bagels instead of making them at home. Okay. <laughs> so tell me, how did you become the owner of Elizabeth's Bagels? Well, um, it's actually a very interesting story. I was a marketing manager, completely different industry field than than food or bagels or anything. I was actually traveling around the country uh, for a mobile phone, cell phone company. And Al needed some extra money, my husband, around Christmas. And he started working a night shift as a baker for Elizabeth's Bagels, for a friend, we're a friend of the family's. And so in the process of doing that, she decided that, she, you know, it was time to maybe move on to better things and wanted to see the business go to someone who would take care of it, not necessarily put it on the market to be sold to just anyone. Um, she was a part of the town and, and, and still lives in town, so it was very important to her. Um, and we just went on a whim. I quit my job and we started making dough together. That's a lot of faith to put bagels. And yes, <laughs> yes. And look at you now. Yes. So and how long ago was that? So that was in 2004. Okay. Um, but Elizabeth Bagels existed prior to since you. Ni um, Elizabeth has been in Franklin since 1994. Okay. Uh, they, yep, they originally received, they consulted with a bagel expert to get the recipes. They, they worked with the recipes. Mm -hmm. And when Al and I came in, it was important that we didn't change anything. It was a great product. It was a staple in town. And we kept, we, I don't even know if anyone actually knew when we took over because we kind of snuck in. Um, we kept the recipes the same. And then slowly but sure, surely after a couple of years, we started bringing in things that we listened to what people wanted, um, such as uh, the wraps, the lattes, the iced coffee options. That's a huge thing. Mm. And, and that's something we've brought in because people have asked for it. Um, so yes. this, will, this show will put all to rest that you are not Elizabeth. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. But and it's I've okay if it years. doesn't. Um, yes. A lot of people have asked, why don't you, you change you've it? You have no problem being anonymous in the background. Sometimes it's um, okay. You know, it's how I screen my phone calls. When they call and ask for Elizabeth <laughs> to talk to the owner and they yeah. don't ask for Jen, I, I, I know what kind of phone, phone call it may be. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you kept the name from the prior owner. We did. And we it did. Was, you know, it sounds yep. like it was seamless. And, and, and one thing, too, I, I just wanted to throw out there is when we when we came I don't think a lot of people know this either um, the Elizabeth was in details. yes ready are you ready this, this is, is important this, this is, is important, important to know <laughs> um, the bagel shop probably w had another four months mm -hmm. it, to it it was not doing it had a great product but it has in in the past year people had started the low carb diet mm -hmm. the fad diets um, Panera had come into town we, we they had already been struggling with no um, Dunkin' Donuts and Honeydew because of the drive through option. Yeah. And then more competition came in. And um, I'm happy to say that, you know, we we, we came, we kind of kept everything the same, but at the same time looked to how to save it. Because it's, it's not a business. It's an entity. It's mm -hmm. a lot of people remember growing up with it as kids going off to college and it was important for us to keep it that that warm fuzzy mm -hmm. place where you run into high school mates and stuff for everybody, so for everybody yes mm -hmm. it's a town meeting place it really is it is yeah so you evolved to include i mean i know i'm a tea drinker so you have really high quality loose leaf tea Yes. Um, and that's great for me because usually I'll come in after taking the kids to school. I've already had my cup of coffee, and I know that I can get a really great cup of tea mm -hmm. when I get there. But I know that I'm in the minority because on Shop Franklin there are a number of posts about these amazing lattes and ice drinks and chocolate. Sometimes and the sweeter the better. A lot yeah. of flavors. So right. I think there's a 
So one is an animal name. Well, the white yes, elephant. one is a white elephant. Okay. Um, a white just elephant. because we couldn't come up with it that actually the white elephant is um, hazelnut, vanilla, and cinnamon. And it was hard to think of what we could call. Most of them are named after candy bars, Milky mm-hmm. Way, Almond Joy. And it was just the first thing that popped in my head because I was thinking of it like that elephant in the room. Why <laughs> can't I th- think of a name for this? Um, so it became the white elephant. Really? Yes. I did not know that. So it's a Jen original creation. Yes. That yes. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. See? Yeah, and that's that's something we brought into the loose leaf tea. And it, it's it's interesting. One thing um, when you own a business is sometimes you for you you're just home thinking. You know, I I, I researched it for myself about loose the, all the benefits to loose leaf tea mm-hmm. and you know, uh, the things you can get from it. And uh, thinking to myself, if if this is something I want, there's people in town who also want this. And and that's an an example of something we brought in. Um, You know, you forget sometimes that if I, if, if it's trending with you, it's, it's, it's trending with other people too. And you may recall, that's how we actually bonded for the first time. Uh, Should we tell that story? Uh, Sure. (laughs) I was in Elizabeth's getting some tea and I actually, I don't know that I knew that you were the owner at the time. No, I don't think so. and we started talking about tea and how thankful I was to be able to get tea. And she handed me a box of tea filters because she had ordered too many. And that was so, it was just the nicest thing. It was just that, you know, talk about Chef Franklin, talk about connection. Just that, like, oh, here, you know, you right. like something I like. Right. Let me support you. We were, yeah, we were talking about all the benefits and how we figured it, found out about it in mm-hmm. certain different types of teas. And it was kind of funny because some, impulsively I was like, oh, here, here's some. And then as soon as I did it, I said, I'll never see that. I just lost a customer. I'll never see that woman again. She'll make her own tea at home. And now. And here we are. We're, we're, we're soulmates, BFF. So exactly. it, it all worked out See over a box know. of tea bags. This is the community part of Shop Franklin. So building that community and that connection with someone in your town that you see. And then we run into each other other places. Mm-hmm. And it just creates that everyone's responsible for everyone else. So mm-hmm. thank you. So now I can have tea at home and not get it yes. at your shop. Yes. <laughs> but I still do. Right, right. And right. many shop Franklin people know And I, I think that, that one box often. I gave you was like a thousand count. Is it still <laughs> sitting in the back of your cupboard somewhere? I feel <laughs> like it must be. It totally is. Okay. So shop Franklin, tea aside, shop Franklin, I'm sorry. So tea aside, Elizabeth Bagels has more than just tea, yes. lattes, they have bagels. Not only do they have bagels, they have bagels for every season. So the latest creation is the rainbow bagel. Yes. So I saw the other day a little girl in there, and she was so excited about the rainbow bagels. She had rainbow shoes. Yes. She just, I think she said rainbow bagel about six times. Mm-hmm. So how did the rainbow bagel come about? So the, the Rainbow Bagel is actually a funny story, and I'm going to be honest, I'm not going to take credit for coming up with that one. Uh, we, he, when we're trying to find healthy and better options for people, uh, such as the unbromated flour and the unbleached flour we use now, no preservatives. And then here comes the biggest trend of 2016, and it went viral on Facebook that mm-hmm. a bagel shop in Brooklyn had found a way to color the, the separate pieces of the uh, bagel dough with dye and then put them together and make these really cool, swirly rainbow bagels. And our first thought was, um, it's still a plain bagel. Uh, it's a lot of work, so, mm-hmm. so there's a, a price difference. Would people really be into that? And I should have known when I woke up in the morning and probably had dozens of emails, Facebook posts from Franklin residents, customers, family members, everyone that you should try this. Uh, so we d- we actually consulted with a, a bagel uh, bagel maker, if you will, it, mm-hmm. um, from Brooklyn, and asked him about the process. We had okay. an idea of how to make it because at that time we had already been making the red and green ones for Christmas. The the key was that they're not just different colors, that they actually swirl and are straight. Um, this, my our rainbow first... bagel, if I tried to do anything rainbow, would be brown. Exactly. And that's what fascinates me. It's right. So there was actually a, a lot of practice building up to that. And um, so I won't uh, get into it, but it's a long it's a long process. It's almost like an art in knowing when to mix, when to stop mixing. And they actually want one thing. I Okay, I will tell you this. 
the key to making the rainbow bagels come out the way they do is they actually have to be individually rolled and, and made. Mm -hmm. So instead of putting them through the machine that will cut the dough and roll them for oh. you, Al, because of course it's not me, I'm not as this talented, Al will actually sit there, cut the dough, roll it out, and put it around his hand, pl twist it, and make mm -hmm. it look that, that special way. Okay. So, are and you gonna you go know, try that at home now? Because no. I told you my, okay. No, I'll come in and okay. get my bagel. I can make tea, I can't make bagels. Oh, Not okay. Even close. <laughs> so that said, so the bagel making process is actually quite labor intensive mm. and takes a while. And to have fresh made kettle boiled bagels in town is probably quite a luxury because now a lot of it is frozen, reheated, shipped off from God knows where. Um, but it takes a while. So it does. It really does. What time is your baker getting into shop? This the if it is a weekend for the earliest, they come in at one a.m. One a.m. So while we are binge watching Netflix episodes and saying just one more before we go to bed, yes, somebody is making your bagels. Starting the morning, starting their morning. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. So they get in. It at is a very long process. Uh, that is why we try very hard not to run out of flavors, but sometimes it happens, mm -hmm. and. We really wish we could, at times, pull out a box from the freezer and bring you your bagels to make people happy. But that, but the reason why they run out is because it would be another four-hour process to to just start to take out one batch mm -hmm. for a customer who really wants one. So I laugh sometimes when a customer says, a plain bagel, oh, you're all out. When's the next batch coming out? And I'll say, tomorrow morning when we open <laughs> at 6 a.m. Uh, it, it's a very long process. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's a very physical process. It is a, and it is also a very old, old technique. It's an old-fashioned technique to make the bagels. There are, are many, many other ways we could do it. Mm -hmm. We could actually, Sarah, we could actually do it now to make the process, and we would get an entire day, an entire day done in 40 minutes. Really? If we wanted to. But then you sacrifice, you sacrifice so much. You sacrifice the taste. You sacrifice mm -hmm. that hard shell. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, I, could, I can point out here, if you don't mind, that the, the, mm -hmm. you can see the hard um, golden shell goes all the way around. Mm -hmm. You may have seen bagels sometimes other places where you might see a white line okay. uh, in the middle. So you only see the shell on the top and the bottom. Mm -hmm. And that is part of the newer process to making bagels. They don't, but they don't quite have that crusty outside. outside and still soft in the middle. I'm going to eat this one after the show, so I have no problem. And I'll, I'll, eat, I'll eat that one I touch, too. So, I'll eat that one. Um, yeah, these are my favorite. It's like the big fat ones where it doesn't really have Me a too. whole nice the no -ho doughy. Yeah, the yeah, so cream cheese doesn't fall in the plain. middle. Nope, no cream cheese. Yeah. Just eat it straight up. Right. right. Um, so I'll put that over there. Do you know, actually, what the number one selling bagel is by a mile? Most no. popular bagel flavor. We have over 18 flavors. What do you think is the most popular and, if, and probably across the country, too? I would probably say plain because I wear the same thing every day and I'm boring and don't like to make complicated choices. Well, I guess you so, are like the majority really? of Franklin residents. Plain is actually the number one oh. selling bagel and, and, and flavor. But I, I like it when people say, oh, you're, oh you're, they're so shocked when I tell them that because we have so many options. And I tell them it's the, it's the vanilla ice cream of bagels. If you mm -hmm. think of it that way, chocolate and vanilla are still the number one. Well, also, you have how many cream cheese flavors? And over 20 cream cheese over flavors. Over 20 cream cheese flavors. Mm -hmm. So my feeling is, is if you're going to get a cream cheese and you're not sure what to pair it with, plain is plain always is also. a winner. Mm -hmm. um, but it's I posted the on stuff. the page before that cream cheese isn't just for bagels. Um, around the holidays, the cinnamon mm -hmm. cream cheese, putting it into cheesecake, getting mm -hmm. actual locally created cream cheese flavors mm -hmm. to incorporate into your other cream cheese needs outside of bagels. Yeah, and they make a quick dip. You you add um, yeah, same part, part sour cream to cream cheese, and to any flavor cream cheese, and, and you have a quick crouté tip. Yep. Yeah. So you Instant can get like the jalapeno chip. cream cheese, and then yeah. you have some spicy, mm -hmm. all these ideas. Mm -hmm. um, what so are you doing after? Are you, I'm kind of hungry now. You I know, it's have it's, breakfast after. It's, yeah, technically it's about lunchtime, <laughs> yeah. so I may start eating that bagel mid-conversation. <laughs> So the so we had mentioned that you have bagels for every holiday. Well, mm -hmm. there is a bagel for every season. So you do the Christmas bagels. So there's the green and the red. Green, and red then and there are St. Patrick's Day bagels. That are green, yeah. And, and there's always a cream cheese, too, flavor for every holiday. Oh, okay. So for St. Patrick's Day. Pistachio. Pistachio. It's going to be a quiz. Christmas. Eggnog. 
Thanksgiving. Cranberry orange. Summer. Blueberry lemon. <laughs> oh. I thought I Keep it there. going. Keep <laughs> it going. She barely knows cream cheese and bagels. <laughs> so what is your favorite part about owning Elizabeth Bagels? Oh, gosh. Because uh, it's a lot of work. It when is I see a lot there, of work. You are definitely managing a lot. In a small space. We are in a very small space. And personally, I would love to see you. Just take over that whole block. I yeah, think I'm fine. Everybody can yeah, um, win the lottery. But um, what's your favorite part about managing Elizabeth? That's hard to say. I, I, I definitely love the people. I think one of my favorite things, a couple of things, is when we have been seeing kids come in with their moms. And then a few years later, we see kids coming in with their friends on half days. Mm -hmm. And then we see them driving in in the morning for school. Mm -hmm. And then when we see them every summer, we know they've off to college. Mm -hmm. And it's it's fun. And it's also fun putting people together. It's kind of a puzzle. So we've we've seen these, these teenagers coming in in the mornings by themselves. And then one day on a weekend, they come in with mom and dad. And we, we it, oh, we didn't, oh, this is your, well, your kid is lovely and very polite every time they come in. That so and that's fun. It's fun being a mm -hmm. part, um, I, I'm, I'm kind of mushy, so it, it's, it's fun being a part of people's lives. Mm -hmm. Well, it's neat, because I know that you also have a love of high schoolers. Yes. Like, it's part of that high school culture. Like, oh, go grab something at Elizabeth. Yes. Um, and then talk about being part of the community. Not that it happens often, um, but I believe, what do you do with the rest of your bagels at the end of the day if you do not sell all of we, them? We uh, have a different, actually a couple different organizations that will take them, mm -hmm. um, thankfully, depending on volunteers. That's time, sometimes a struggle with the organization. So mm -hmm. I can say who, uh, on, fr on certain days, mm -hmm. uh, Norfolk uh, Food Pantry takes them. Mm -hmm. I also have the, uh, and then they also go to the senior center in Norfolk. Mm -hmm. And then there's one day where it's a Medway uh, community center that takes them. And Tuesday, I, I think, is, is one of my um, favorites. Tuesday, they go to um, the Medway Community Church where they actually have a soup night every Tuesday. And anyone can oh, go. Anyone great. can just go, no questions asked, enjoy a nice meal, mm -hmm. and um, enjoy dinner. And, I, and the bagels are on the side with whatever soup they're serving that day so that's their free community and, meal that they have and yeah so anyone you know if you need it or you don't need it mm -hmm. um it's just a, it's nice that they put that on for them and then the days that people don't pick them up um a farm picks them up and chickens nice. and pigs it gets ground up in their meal and so it's always it's always so going somewhere gets used. it always gets used mm -hmm. um I, I and if they don't get if there's happens to be they have to cancel and can't come in the employees. It's a free for all, guys. <laughs> Whatever them. you can fit in a bag, take them home, drop them off. Uh, so I've had some employees, yeah, hang around, yeah, hang around about three. I, I, have to, I hate to say that, <laughs> but I have given them away. Um, I drop um, some of the rougher days when the weather's not so good. I'll drop them off at the police station or the fire department if there's mm -hmm. you know some left. And um, just I don't want to see them get. Uh, they're made fresh every day and then they're done. We don't serve anything the very next day. We start all over. Mm -hmm. So um, it, I always feel good when they're put to use. Now talking more about community, there's a few other things you do in the community. There's a certain volleyball, uh, dodgeball. <laughs> yes. Elizabeth Bagels has their very own dodgeball team. Um, yes, the Bagel Babes. The Bagel Babes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and that is for Best Buddies? That is for Best Buddies, yes. We have done that mm -hmm. in the past. That is probably the most fun. It's, it's, it, I, and I, let me just clarify, I never force anyone to volunteer mm -hmm. to sign up for anything. Um, we just all have a lot of fun there. It, it makes the day go by. And so when I say who wants to be on the dodgeball team, I have to actually limit who can be on the dodgeball team. Uh, yeah, so it's a good cause. It supports Best Buddies. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have fun. We get dressed up. There's themes sometimes. Uh, one year we were a retro 80s volleyball team with the socks and the shorts and, and everything. And hopefully we'll find some photo evidence of this in post-production. Yes, it, Pete can put that on screen. I think someone told me once that our Facebook page pictures stay there forever. So maybe if you we'll search through to. the photos, you may find evidence. So hopefully everyone watching this is going to have photo yeah. evidence of that. Mm -hmm. um, 
So, and then of course, Elizabeth Bagels also, you've been very generous with working with select charities and donating mm-hmm. your time and energy and efforts to contribute to the community. Mm-hmm. So thank you very much. Because oh, that's welcome. a core part of why I've been working so hard with Shop Franklin is to build that community. And I think that Elizabeth Bagels is thank a you. great example thank of that. Thank you. We're, we're happy to do it. I think Franklin is a, a very unique town where I've never seen before chains go out of business um, in the past, such as Pizza Hut and mm. KFC. Because if if it wasn't, we wouldn't be here if we weren't in a different type of town. It's it, They support their, their small businesses and appreciate us being there. So we just give back for that reason. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Well, now we're gonna take some time and explore the deep talent that you have. I know that you personally cannot make the bagels for a few reasons. So Jen is not the one making the bagels. I'll let you say why. I do not, well, I don't make dough anymore because I was fired, actually, by my husband. It's okay. Um, It's probably better that way. So that's why you'll see me up front. And I am actually um, physically challenged. It's, don't be, it's okay. It's okay. I'm just letting you tell the I'm physically challenged and too short to make the bagels. It's a, it's a, when I say physically challenged, I don't mean too tall. I meant short. And not too pretty, (laughs) too. Too short. Too short. Too so short. you actually have to lean the, over. Yes. The kettle itself the kettle is, is, is big, just, if you think right? a bottle, uh, I mean, a, a pot of water boiling at home on the stove, and if you can imagine one size, uh, the size of a hot tub, that is our kettle that we boil the bagels. And the oven is probably the size of you know your bedroom at home and you have to reach in the really back far. to pull them out. Yeah. And it's okay. So, Jen, although you're physically challenged and can't make the bagels, you contribute in so many other ways. Oh, yes. So, let's go in the kitchen and show us your wild talent. Great. Thanks. So, here we are in the studio kitchen, and Jen is going to show us how to make a lox tray. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, there's one very important public service message we have to share. So, Jen, tell me. So, Sarah, I don't know if you know this, but... Um, a little birdie told me on Good Accord that one, the number one emergency ER visit on a Sunday morning is cuts from cutting a bagel. So before you even start with your lox plat or anything else, the most important thing is the safe and right way to cut your bagel. So as you can see, if you know, for most bagels, they're all a little different, but for the most part, they all have this flat and kind of rough edge, not shiny or anything. What, what happens is when you just start cutting, if, you're, if your hand slips, this shiny outside crust, is that's when people tend to cut their hand. So if you start on this rough side, the knife will just go right, slide right in for you. You just always want to have your fingers not in the same direction as the knife. So fingers up here, and as soon as you get your knife in and started, you flip it over, and then you continue straight down. So your knife is never anywhere near your hand. You are welcome. Thank you. Well, thank you. You're welcome. You are welcome. For now, Safety you know first. that tip. Safety first. All right. So... Now that we have that, we can set up our bagels on the tray yes. and prepare our separate tray for our lox platter. Yes. So, so you begin with a tray of romaine. Yes. So, Jen, before we move on with the lox platter, now that we have our safety bagel cutting, um, just to point out on lox. So lox is salmon. So those of us who maybe don't eat it every day or may not be familiar, mm-hmm. lox is salmon. But it's not raw salmon, so it's not a sushi salmon. So it's actually a cured and smoked salmon, correct? correct. Yes, okay. there's two ways uh, to actually um, to make your lox. There is a hot smoked procedure to make this, and then there's a cold smoked procedure. Mm-hmm. The hot smoked procedure you've probably seen maybe on a tray with some crackers as an appetizer at night. It looks like a cooked piece of salmon that, that now is, is cold. Mm-hmm. This is a cold smoking process where they have the filet of fish and they cover it with a salt mixture and that is how they make this into lox but it is not raw it has been processed Mm -hmm. and this you actually import or ship up from brooklyn we actually get that directly from acme from brooklyn yes yes it is authentic yes so let's get going okay so 
you know, it's more about how you want it to look, but when I, you know, it, to make this, if you have some company coming over and you want to impress them with some, you know, it all done out platter, the first thing I would start with is the tomatoes. Just because what we're going to do is I try to visualize what it's going to look like in the end. And you don't worry if you have a hole here in the middle of your platter because that's going to get covered up by the fish. So I try to envision a empty space in the middle where we're going to end up putting the locks because the locks should be the star of the platter. So you want to leave a lot of room for that. You can always fix it up after. Mm -hmm. So most people, when they put locks on a bagel, are going to put one, maybe two slices of tomato and maybe one or two slices of the cucumber. What you really want to see and taste is the locks. So you don't need a lot of this stuff. Um, the onions always look pretty. Just put them a little like this, um, you know, so that you can just pick up maybe one ring or two rings. Um, don't need a ton. And then the cucumbers, I like to fan out at the top of the fish or I should say when we're done, it's gonna be the bottom of the fish. Um, so it actually can kind of look like the fish tail, like the scales of the tail oh, at the cute. bottom. So, so you would have that, you'd have a few cucumbers here like that. Mm -hmm. And so we would have that full there. And now I'm gonna go ahead with the locks in the middle. And there's a couple ways you can do it, depending on how you want it, your finished project to look. And I'd start in the beginning, sometimes when you get a fish, it's nice to have these, these big um, pieces that will fit perfectly on a bagel. Sometimes there's you know bits that are a little thinner than this and they mm -hmm. break up a little. So I would find your pieces that look like this and put them aside. And then I would find maybe your little broken up pieces first um, that, that have maybe come loose and put them there for, down first because mm -hmm. we're gonna put the nicer, prettier pieces right over it. So your, your guests will never know mm -hmm. that it broke up a little bit on the bottom. Uh, so a couple ways that you can fold the locks is you can do it as the sides in. So what I'm doing here is just folding this in like this mm -hmm. and then putting it down just like that. Mm -hmm. And you can go around that same way all the way around. And then it's easy to just, you know, pick up or get a toothpick and put it right on the finished sandwich. Mm -hmm. um, one of my favorite ways to do it is to kind of have a fish shape at the end, and that's to fold it this way. So all I really did here, Sarah, was, was like I folded in half, correct. Okay. Yeah, so I just folded it in half, and you can actually do two things. Um, you can fold it in half and then have them go this way, so that when you're finished, your finished project, Oh, cute. Your finished is a straight line all the way down. Okay. And it, it's more uniform looking that way. People can still pull up just one piece at a time instead of the whole fish, mm -hmm. and then it's straight down. I like to do it the other way because, like I said, it, by the end it looks like, you know, you've made yourself a little fish. So. You had mentioned something. So if you can look at my yes. fingers here. Very oily. So, so that's the natural oils of the fish. It's not like it's soaked in oil or packed in oil yeah. or cooked with oil. That's, that's just, the good stuff. That's that's, that's that the omega three. You're looking that at that healthy, yes. great for your yes. skin, great for you. Yes, you could um, just if you wanted slather to slather it yes, on you afterwards. You so could. we'll have the beauty section after mm -hmm. we finish this. Mm -hmm. Now there's one piece left. I'll leave it to you. Okay. I don't know if I did that. So one. if you just if you are making this at home, it doesn't hurt to put on a pair of gloves. Um, the you know just because this does permeate the skin the oil so you just want to maybe if you have so when I get to the end I just kind of fold them a little smaller just right mm -hmm. at the end and you know just fix your 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 looser pieces mm -hmm. that are sticking out um, this right here that you're looking at is in case people were wondering this is a smaller size tray this is a pound of locks oh that's so, good to know so how many, how much, how many people would a pound of lox serve? So a pound, if you have nice big pieces like this, mm -hmm. we usually assume one two slice to two slices tops per sandwich. Okay. So sixteen, mm -hmm. a pound of lox should be enough for fourteen to sixteen people. Oh wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we all know everyone has their preference, mm -hmm. so take this and change it to suit your smearing needs. Yep. 
We're gonna put, we're gonna use plain today, chives, scallions, sometimes a good one. Um, so I'm just gonna reach over here and grab some plain cream cheese, and it's just a little bit more than what you would do for butter. Uh, if you if you were buttering a mm -hmm. piece of bread at home, that's just a, a little bit more for your um, lox sandwich and. So just enough that you can it. kind of... Just to cover the surface, really, yes. Yeah. So just like that. Put that so how there. do you do your lox bagel? Okay, good. Then, uh, like I said, just one to two tomatoes. A couple of... Uh, your, a couple of cucumbers, just so you know, you have them in every bite. And of course, the, you can't forget the red onion. Mm -hmm. That's key uh, That is mind. very key. That is very key to a lox sandwich. Okay. And then... Like I said, they can come over. They don't even have to undo it. They could just put one and two just right on the sandwich like that. Mm -hmm. Covers every service. You've done and that's this before. It. That's it. Lovely. A little lemon. Oh, to bring out that flavor. To spring, yep, spring on a little lemon. And capers, a little few, couple of capers. And that's it. That's your sandwich. Ta-da! Ta -da. Thank you. My lox, bacon of the sea, sandwich. Thank you for watching Shop Franklin, supporting small business. I am Sarah Mabardi, and I look forward to seeing you around town. This program was made possible by your Franklin friends and neighbors. Good folks, just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching.